the infamous at this point Zappo debit card, which was hyped for many months as a uh, possible solution for people who want to go spend their bitcoins around the around the world at any merchant who already takes credit cards and debit cards. And, uh, you know, just swipe a card and money comes out of your Bitcoin wallet or whatever and and you're good to go. And uh, Zoppo received a bunch of venture funding. I think it was over like over $12 million, probably a lot more than that. Um, and, you know, a lot of people were excited. But as the debit card actually began to roll out, um, people realized that this isn't all it's cracked up to be that a lot of the same fees are associated with it as regular debit and credit cards. So Zoppo had to do some backpedaling a little bit um, in terms of what they promised and eventually even had to tell people that we we will cover those fees that might be levy, levied against you by the legacy banking system. Don't worry, it's all good. Please still love us. <laughs> um, <laughs> please still use our product. We'll cover it for you. So, you know, what do you what do you think about that? Yeah. So, I was one of the people who were super excited about Zappo because um, you know there's not there is not really a globally available you know Bitcoin debit card. You can put. You can put bitcoins on like a prepaid card or do like some, like something to yeah. Get it there's on there there's, there's a PayPal then, method that I that I've been using, but I'll I'll get into that in a minute. Yeah, and then there's there's a couple bitcoin debit card services in Canada, some other ones in some other places. But other than that, there's there's no other like real actual bitcoin debit card. So when I found out about Zappo, actually, it was when I read your article that you wrote you know, a few months ago, um, I got really excited yeah. because obviously, you know, I write for Coinbrief, I get paid in Bitcoin, like, how how much easier would it be, like, if I wanted to buy something from a store that doesn't accept Bitcoin, I got to, you know, sell my Bitcoins on Coinbase, wait four days for it to go in my bank account, yeah. and then go buy it. If I, had a, if I had a debit card, it just wouldn't matter. Um, so I was really excited about that. And I was just as disappointed as everyone else was. And what happened was that they started shipping out the cards in July, like they said they were going to. And some people in the U.S. found out that it's not available in the U.S. Now, Zappo could have done the right thing, and they could have warned people ahead of time, or they could have been like, this is a slight possibility that it won't, that it won't be available in some countries. But they decided to wait until the people were actually confirming their shipping address so they could get the card to say, oh, we notice you have a uh, United States-based shipping address. Unfortunately, due to U.S. financial regulations, we can't actually ship the card to your house. And so, Sorry, America. So people found out just Zappo treated it as an after as an afterthought. People found out it wasn't acceptable or wasn't available in the U.S. Got kind of mad about that, but then there were some people. They were like, "Haha, now the U.S. gets to know what it's like to not be able to use a Bitcoin service yeah. in their country because you know normally it's the other way around. It's available in the U.S. nowhere else." Yeah. Then a few days later, Zappo updated their FAQ page. Uh, where it says, what about fees? Um, before they made this update, it said, all you have to pay is $15 to get the actual card. After that, that the there's promise. no fees. Yep. Well, then they put up this little chart, and it had this huge list of fees, you know, like uh, like termination fees maybe, I think. Uh, monthly fee. Uh, monthly service just fee. Having just, the card. just having it. Currency conversions, like if you... You know, try to get a foreign currency you have, with your card. You have to pay a fee for that. ATM all these fees. fees, yeah, ATM fees. All these fees that uh, that you know they're pretty, they're common with uh, you know traditional debit and credit cards. But Zappo said we wouldn't have those fees, so people got really mad about that. So mad that Zappo actually had to make a post on their official blog, and they said. Um, I said, oh no, these 
these aren't the fees you're actually going to have to pay. We just put these fees on the website because um, this is what these are the kinds of fees that you have to pay on the legacy banking system. And since we're operating on an existing credit card infrastructure, you might have you might, you might end up accidentally yeah. you might accidentally get charged a fee. But don't worry, we're going to reimburse any fees you get charged. I didn't buy it. I don't think there were a lot of people that bought it, and Zappo pretty much ruined their reputation over the course of like three days. Yeah, I mean, really, like, they just hyped it up too much at the beginning, and, uh, you know, maybe I'm personally responsible for that a little bit with my article. I need to go back and, and see how I covered that exactly to see if I made it sound that, you know, there would be, like, no fees associated with it, but, you know... They they should have been more transparent from the from the beginning, um, like just be honest with people, like just let them know, like people had already ordered the car and, and card and signed up for the service, and they don't even know that these fees might be lev levied against them, and just trying to backpedal now and saying don't worry we'll cover it for you, like already your re your reputation is is downgraded already at this point. So, I mean. I, I still might get one, but uh, personally, like, I, I already have a solution for, uh, like, using a debit card um, with, with Bitcoin, with money that ca originally came from Bitcoin. Um, the, the method that I use is through PayPal. Uh, I just go on local Bitcoins, um, find a person who will buy my Bitcoins for the best possible rate, and sell it to them through PayPal. They pay me through PayPal. Usually they cover, um, they, they actually buy at a higher rate to cover the PayPal fees. So in the end, I'm getting the same, the same value, same amount of Bitcoins that I would have gotten uh, from like selling through Coinbase or to someone for the actual exchange rate. And then once, it's, once the money's in my PayPal account, um, I have a PayPal uh, debit MasterCard, um, which enables me to just transfer the funds immediately from my PayPal account uh, to the debit MasterCard. And then that's obviously compatible with, with any, you know, debit credit uh, merchants that take that. And, you know, that's, that's a couple of, that's a few steps, but um, it's, it's, actually, it's actually pretty easy and straightforward once you do it a couple times. And the, the hardest part is just finding someone who will give you like a, a, a good rate on local bitcoins in PayPal dollars. Um, you pretty much have to find someone who, uh, you know, you have, you have to go on in the middle of the day when, when there's a lot of people awake and, um, and find, just sort by best deal and, and, and do it that way. But that's been working out pretty well for me so far. And I actually see no reason to actually switch over to Zappo now. Uh, especially when it would cost fifteen dollars just to get the card, and you know, it, all the legacy banking and ATM fees and and all that associated with it, like the 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 PayPal debit card that I that I use for this that does have a five dollar monthly fee, um, but and then there's ATM fees as well if I go if I withdraw at a random ATM, but you know it's it's fairly straightforward and I just see no reason to to use Zappo at, at this point. Right. Well, with, with that method, you know, you, you actually have to have people in your area that are, you know, buying and selling Bitcoin. Not necessarily. Right? If you're doing it over if, over PayPal, um, it's basically it's basically anywhere. That's true. Because, see, my problem with local Bitcoins is that nobody in my area is has Bitcoin. Yeah, so you can't do it locally in like, person um, cash cash transaction. I, I went on there. Yeah. Yeah. Go like ahead. um, like I went on there, and there's like five people within a hundred mile radius of me, and none of them were buying; they were all selling, and their prices were like six hundred and seventy dollars. So, you know, there's there's not yeah, really a big market deal. in my area. That's pretty bad. Yeah. Deal. There's not really a Bitcoin market in my area. Yeah, I mean, but I, you know, I could always just put it in a different zip code and find you know deals that aren't in my area. Yeah, and like do don't don't do um, cash trend if you don't if you if you're not looking for cash transactions, do online transactions instead, and that's how you find 
all the people who will transact through PayPal and other like random forms of money transfer like money pack and stuff that I have never used personally but um, yeah there's actually there's people who will pay a good rate in PayPal dollars if you can if you can find them in the right time of day and they'll cover the PayPal fees for you I don't know how they're able to do that and stay in business you know buying bitcoins on local bitcoins but somehow they do it and you know it's pretty straightforward the, the only like problem is if you secure your local bitcoins account with um, an authenticator like Google authenticator for two-factor authentication um, you have to be pretty careful about um, about that because like I, I updated my phone and and reinstalled the Google authenticator and now I had to wait two weeks uh, for to get access to my local bitcoins funds luckily that two weeks is just about up but you know the, it's it's um, there's a way to do it there's a way to do it without having to rely on Zappo yeah I just I wish it would be easier though like that's, it'll get easier in time. that's the that's the next step towards you know mainstream adoption is you have you have to make it easy you have to make it easy enough for people to use uh, so that they actually you know have an incentive to switch over to it yeah like you you have to be able to use it at enough places so it needs enough merchant acceptance and it has to be easy for the average person to use it like right now there's a lot of steps involved like you have to get a download a wallet buy them on an exchange you know all this stuff when we get when we get some like really um, intuitive things like debit cards and and stuff like that it'll be just like a bank account and people can use it and not even realize they're using bitcoins like it yeah. won't be much different for them and, th and that's when that's when bitcoin will really take off yeah there was a quote by someone i don't, i forget who it was but um i read it online somewhere they said that bitcoin will truly make it big when people are using it and they don't know that they're using bitcoin yeah so uh you know i think we're on our way to that point and we're making progress is we're just not getting there as fast as some people, you know, kind of hoped idealistically based on promises by companies like Zappo. You know, it's going to it's going to take a lot of time and you still have to go through you still have to deal with all the BS uh banking fees that go along with regular credit and debit card systems. So, um, you know, I guess you know, yeah. personally I'm not going to use Zappo, but if other people want to try it, yeah, go go ahead and um, you know, post your reviews online, post your reviews on Reddit about your experience with Zappo, like how many, how much fees did you actually experience and did Zappo actually reimburse you for it? You know, that the proof will be in the pudding about whether this is an actually uh, good product. Yeah, I was going to get one and do a review for it on CoinBrief, but not available in the U.S., so. But, I mean, it's, it's never going to, nothing's ever going to go, you know, perfectly as planned, and it's... It's not really a major setback, to be honest, because, you know, how old is Bitcoin? Five years? And we're already, we already have, like, early versions of Bitcoin debit cards. Yeah. You know, like, how, yeah. how long, um, how long did the dollar exist before credit cards and debit cards came into existence? <laughs> um, and how long did it take between the first credit cards, like, how long did it take starting out the first credit cards to get where they are today? You know, it took mm. decades, and yeah. we're five we're five years in, and we already have you know like a very crude version of debit cards already. So it's it's happening a lot faster than any other monetary technology ever has. We just have to be patient. Yeah, that's a really interesting way to look at it. Like when you put things in the big perspective, Bitcoin's only been around for five years, and even just even just a year ago, like in the summer of 2013. Um, we had none of these services, not nearly as many wallets, um, definitely no debit cards that could possibly be linked to a, to a Bitcoin account. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess we have made a lot of progress in the past year. And people people are trying to make even rapider progress for the next coming year. You know, it's just we need we do need to be patient.